One of the main things when it comes to Pokemon is the idea of going out in the world, throwing a ball at a monster, and then boom! It's yours. It's your pocket monster. But ever since I was a kid and the idea of Pokeballs were introduced, I always kind of was confused or I just wondered what exactly is a Pokeball? How does it work? What is the Pokemon experience when it's inside of the Pokeball? And throughout the years, it seems like whether it's the games or the anime or other types of Pokemon media, it always was really vague in how it explains what's going on inside of the Pokeball. So coming back to Pokemon, on all these years later and looking at that question specifically, we were really curious, so we decided to take a deep dive into the lore of the Pokeball itself and try to get a better understanding of what it is like inside of a Pokeball, what a Pokemon experiences, and how Pokeballs in one way or another, which is really interesting, evolved within the lore of Pokemon itself. And while that sounds super nerdy, we're just curious because the fact that this has been something that's been kind of an issue since the very first episode of the Pokemon anime, surely we can't be the only ones asking this question. For instance, the very first episode of Pokemon, which aired all the way back in the 90s, one of the biggest plot points of that first episode is the fact that Pikachu hates being inside of his Pokeball. Hence the reason that Ash's Pikachu never goes in the Pokeball, and even when things get really intense and Ash is practically begging Pikachu to go into the Pokeball, Pikachu pretty much refuses. It kind of sets up this scene that maybe the Pokeball is this awful place, though as the series progresses and Ash catches other Pokemon, they don't seem to have a problem with the Pokeball. I don't know, maybe Pikachu's just a little claustrophobic or something. Okay, then in the anime, there are a few moments where we get to see a glimpse inside of a Pokeball, though it could be an artist rendition and not really in lore accurate to what a Pokeball is like, but it's actually kind of creepy. In one of the earlier seasons, we do get to see Misty's Psyduck inside of a Pokeball, and it's just kind of a black space void of nothingness. And later on in the Black and White series, we also get to see Iris's Dragonite in a Pokeball, and while it does have updated visuals, it's still kind of just this dark round void. Now, of course, this probably wouldn't be so bad if there was some sort of sleep theory out there where the Pokemon are just kind of unconscious or asleep throughout the entire time that they're in their Pokeball, though we know with the fact that some Pokemon can just jump out of their Pokeball at will, like Misty Psyduck or Jesse's Wobbuffet, that's likely not the case. Interestingly enough, as we kind of dove into the lore a bit, we found that there are some pretty massive discrepancies when it comes to the technicalities of a Pokeball along with the history of it itself. Like, for instance, in Pokemon Black and White 2, Drayden actually claims that Pokeballs didn't exist during his childhood. Though right away in Pokemon Legends of Arceus, we can see in the trailer that there is kind of a older version of a Pokeball that is made out of wood that's used there instead. In the Pokemon anime, there's an episode in the Orange Islands called A Ship Full of Shivers, where the captain of the boat has a ghastly inside of a Pokeball from 300 years earlier, and it's it's just a modern looking Pokeball. But then in Pokemon Forever, Sam has this type of Pokeball capture device dating things back 40 years before the main part of the anime takes place. And then just to make things even more confusing, a few official Pokemon publications like the Pokemon Fan Club in Japan have on different occurrences listed that the modern version of the Pokeball was developed in 1925 in Celadon City, while Pokemon Gold and Silver suggest that Pokeballs were invented in the Johto region Region, which were originally made out of apricorns fitted with some different type of technology. And then briefly in Pocket Monsters, the animation it seems like they make the discovery of Pokeballs almost sound like an accident. For instance, it says, while examining the energy of the Pokemon species, Primeape's rage, he accidentally weakened it with a drug overdose, leading it to somehow get captured inside the case for the professor's reading glasses, forgetting its anger entirely and falling asleep peacefully. And interestingly enough, while this kind of is a little bit of a different version or variation of what we've seen for the backstory when it comes to the Pokeball, they did keep the discovery year of 1925, which is a really interesting point that's made here. Then in the Pokemon Adventures manga, you can actually see some of the Pokemon straight up through the Pokeball. It's some sort of transparent type 
capsule. But then in the Pocket Monsters manga, we can see these terrifying images with its take on how Pokeballs supposedly work. And if we look back to Diamond and Pearl, Lucian of the Sinnoh Elite Four actually briefly mentions something that could give some huge insight to what it is actually like inside of a Pokeball. He alludes to the fact that weakened Pokemon instinctively curl up tight in an attempt to heal themselves, which then when a Pokemon ends up getting captured, it's an environment, you know, curling up tight that is encouraged for the Pokemon itself, which may be why weakening a Pokemon beforehand does make the Pokemon more likely to stay in the Pokeball. And though still, this isn't really a very straightforward answer. It wouldn't be all the way until later on in Sun and Moon, where we would get somewhat of an actual answer to this question that has existed for so many years. Sure, fans have speculated what it could be like, whether it's like a little nature reserve kind of condensed in some virtual augmented reality thing for the Pokemon, and we do know to an extent that the Pokeball transforms the Pokemon from their physical state into more of that red pure energy that we see in the anime, but the Sun and Moon producer Junichi Masuda went on to say in an interview that I think it's safe to say that it's very comfortable inside of a Pokeball. It's a very comfortable environment, maybe the equivalent of a high-end suite room in a fancy hotel. So on one hand, this is really interesting because it does give us a little bit of a visualization in one way or another as to what it could be like to be in a Pokeball. I kind of imagine a Pokemon in a hotel room, though the idea of maybe having an ecosystem designed for the best comfort of said Pokemon might also be something in consideration. And while this is an incredibly cool piece of information and it does paint an awesome picture of what it's like inside of a Pokeball, there's still a lot of questions and variables that come into play. Most notably still, why is it that Pikachu absolutely hates being inside of the Pokeball. Is it just bored? I don't know. One of the leading theories when it comes to Ash's Pikachu per se is that being inside of a Pokeball is kind of an incredibly isolating feeling. If you look to the games and the anime, oftentimes when everyone's taking a break, Ash will just let his Pokemon out to come hang out. Or even in the games like Pokemon Sword and Shield, there's the whole feature where you can let your Pokemon out to play and interact and kind of hang out. My Pokemon Ranch is another one where you can see your Pokemon interacting not inside of their Pokeballs, which likely does mean that while the Pokeballs that they could be in might be extremely comfortable and fit into their ecosystem, it may just still be them in a blank ecosystem area completely by themselves, devoid of any social interactions whatsoever. And while of course the Pokeballs may be extremely comfortable to be in, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the most fulfilling when it comes to social interaction along the way. Kind of like the ultimate quarantining device, but for Pokemon. Now, of course, that doesn't even get into the possibility or the very likelihood that the different types of Pokeballs that exist may cater even more specifically and better for said Pokemon, where a Pokemon that is put in a Luxury Ball or a Master Ball may have a better experience or a different type of experience than maybe a regular Pokeball. And since Pokemon trainers can't transfer Pokemon to a new Pokeball, it is kind of interesting thinking about how widely used a usual or regular Pokeball Pokeball is. All new trainers get their first Pokemon in a regular Pokeball. Though, if you remember, Pikachu's Pokeball did have that little lightning picture thing on it, which does make us wonder if this was a special Pokeball to keep Pikachu in it in that first episode prior to Ash receiving it. But at the very least, this deep dive has allowed us to get a little bit of insight as to what it could be like inside of a Pokeball with real explanations from the people who make the games. But there's still a lot of room for speculation and a lot of ambiguity when it comes to the Pokeball topic. But what do you guys think about this? Do you think that the Pokemon are just living at large inside the Pokeball? Or do you think that it maybe has a little bit of a darker undertone than what is initially presented in the television series? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. We've been working really hard on this channel, so your guys' support means the world to us. That's it for today, though. We'll see you all next time.